The U.S. aviation market, one of the most vibrant markets in the world, is always the target of aircraft manufacturers. However, only some aircraft companies can succeed here. The Embraer E2, the darling of the Brazilian aviation industry, was promised to make a difference but has not been able to attract demanding customers. So with such great potential, why can't the aircraft make the mark as expected? Should Embraer review its business strategy to penetrate this market? Let's find out. The Embraer E-Jets have become the most popular regional aircraft globally, utilized by nearly every major airline due to their unmatched fuel efficiency and passenger comfort, particularly with their 2 Akarut 2 seating configuration. Introduced in 2001, the first-generation E-Jets, now known as the E-1 series, revolutionized regional aviation by excelling under all operating conditions. The E-1 series was groundbreaking, designed as both a replacement for aging regional jets and a new market segment capable of replacing older narrow-body jets like the MD-80 and early Boeing 737 models. These jets allowed airlines to expand routes to smaller cities while boosting capacity on regional routes to major hubs. Previously, such flights were dominated by slower turboprops like the Embraer 120, Embraer's first fully commercial aircraft. The E-1 success is evident. Nearly 2,000 Embraer 170, 175, 190, and 195 aircraft were ordered worldwide, covering every continent except Antarctica. The E-Jet E-2 series, which was unveiled at the Paris Air Show in June 2013, has received much anticipation with several improvements over the original E-Jet. The E-2 series introduced significant upgrades, including Pratt and Whitney's advanced geared turbofan engines, featuring larger fan diameters for better efficiency. This engine, also used in the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX families, enables a 20% reduction in fuel consumption compared to the E-1 series. Other improvements include redesigned wings, smaller stabilizers, and an upgraded cockpit, offering airlines lower trip costs, 20% less than the A320neo, and 10% less than the Airbus A220. The new aircraft includes three variants with the same fuselage cross-section and different lengths and three different redesigned wings, a fly-by-wire control system with new avionics and an upgraded cabin. These variants offer a maximum takeoff weight of 44.6 to 62.5 tons and a range of 2,000 to 3,000 nautical miles, about 3,700 to 5,600 kilometers. The first variant, the E-190 E-2, made its maiden flight on the 23rd of May 2016 and flight testing proceeded as scheduled without major problems. It received certification on the 28th of February 2018 before entering service with the launch customer, Widero, on the 24th of April. Certification for the larger, E-195, E-2, was received in April 20th, 19. Azul Brazilian Airlines was the first airline to operate the aircraft. The smaller E-175 E-2 was originally scheduled for delivery in 2021, but has been delayed beyond 2027 due to lack of demand. The E-2 is designed with a larger cargo hold, meeting the growing cargo needs of airlines. In addition, its interior has been completely redesigned, providing more spacious, more comfortable space for both passengers and crew. A modern entertainment system with Wi-Fi connectivity and larger windows for a more comfortable and modern feel are also indispensable for the onboard experience. The significantly lower cabin noise level compared to the E-Jet also provides a quieter and more comfortable flying experience. Furthermore, the advanced avionics system on this aircraft also helps automate many tasks to reduce the workload for pilots and improve safety. It can be said that the E-2 is a significant upgrade over the original model. The new improvements seem to make the E-2 an attractive option for airlines looking for an efficient and competitive regional jet. Despite these advantages, the E-2 series has seen sluggish sales. As of October 20th, 24, Embraer has secured only 354 orders, 302 for the E-195 E-2, 52 for the 190, and none for the 175. This is far below the 700 planes break-even point Embraer needs, raising questions about the program's viability. It's fair to say the plane is facing the reality of not being warmly welcomed, especially in the U.S. market. Unlike in many other parts of the world, 
Major airlines such as Delta Airlines, United Airlines, and American Airlines do not operate the majority of their regional flights directly. Instead, they partner with smaller regional carriers like SkyWest Airlines, Horizon Air, and Mesa Airlines through service agreements. This strategy allows them to significantly reduce operating costs by outsourcing short-haul operations to these partners. However, this operational model comes with its own set of challenges. Chief among them is the Scope Clause, a stipulation included in the agreements between airlines and their pilots' unions. The Scope Clause is designed to protect the jobs, wages, and benefits of mainline pilots by limiting the outsourcing of flights to regional carriers. It imposes strict restrictions on the size and weight of aircraft that can be flown under regional airline operations. Currently, the Scope Clause caps regional jets at a maximum of 76 seats and a maximum takeoff weight of 86,000 pounds. This regulation has created a significant barrier for the Embraer 175E2, a member of the E2 series. With a seating capacity of 80, 90 passengers and a maximum takeoff weight of approximately 98,000 pounds, the E-175E2 exceeds the limits imposed by the scope clause, making it non-compliant for regional operations in the U.S. Consequently, U.S. airlines have been unable to incorporate the air lane into their fleets. Instead, these airlines have continued to rely on the older E-175 model, which meets the scope clause requirements. Since its introduction, the older one has remained a staple of U.S. regional airline operations, with 170 units ordered in recent years to sustain fleet demand. The impact of the scope clause is not limited to the E-175 E-2. Other members of the E-2 family, such as the 190 and 195, face similar limitations in the U.S. market, primarily because their weight and capacity specifications exceed the scope clause thresholds. This has led major airlines like Delta, United, and American to reject the entire E-2 series and seek alternative aircraft for their operations. Among these alternatives, the Airbus A220 has emerged as a preferred choice for several carriers. Delta, for instance, has adopted the A220 for its mainline operations, capitalizing on the aircraft's larger seating capacity of up to 145 passengers and superior fuel efficiency. This shift has further limited opportunities for the E2 series in a market where Embraer had previously been a dominant player. Despite these challenges, there is still potential for the E175 E2 to gain traction in the U.S. market, though not immediately. Many airlines, including Delta, have expressed interest in the E175 E2, contingent on future amendments to the scope clause. Embraer anticipates that it could take at least a decade for these regulations to change. Until then, the airplane will likely remain sidelined, unable to compete in a market where regulatory constraints rather than performance dictate demand. The broader implications of the scope clause also highlight the complex dynamics of the U.S. aviation industry. While it serves to protect pilot jobs and benefits, it has also constrained innovation and fleet modernization for regional carriers. For Embraer, whose E2 series was designed to build on the success of the earlier E1 family, these restrictions represent a significant hurdle in achieving profitability and growth in one of its most lucrative markets. Another major challenge for Embraer's E2 family has been reliability issues with the Pratt & Whitney PW 1900G geared turbofan engine. This advanced engine, which is used not only on the E2 family but also on Airbus A220 and some A320 NEO models, is designed to improve fuel efficiency and reduce operating costs. However, in July 20th, 23, a serious issue related to contamination during the manufacturing of engine parts was discovered. This caused many engines to undergo inspection or replacement, leading to a global grounding. Airlines such as KLM and Helvetic, which operate E2 aircraft, were forced to temporarily ground part of their fleets to fix the problem. This not only caused a loss of operating costs, but also seriously affected the schedules and reputation of the airlines. As a result, many other airlines became more cautious when considering ordering the E2 series. Instead, they chose to maintain or continue to operate older aircraft, which have proven reliability and efficiency. Although this problem may be temporary, it has created a sense of apprehension in the market, reducing the attractiveness of the E2 series in the eyes of airlines. To regain confidence, Embraer must not only thoroughly resolve the technical issues with the Pratt & Whitney engines, 
but also ensure that similar incidents do not recur in the future. This is crucial if the E-2 series is to become the first choice in the modern regional jet segment. Despite its challenges, Embraer's E-2 family still has the potential to attract attention and gain market share in the long term. After Bombardier discontinued the CRJ in 2020, Embraer has a unique position in the 100-seat regional jet segment. As legacy aircraft like the CRJ-200 are phased out, airlines will be forced to look for alternatives and the E-2 will become the only viable option. With its superior fuel efficiency and performance, the E-2 is expected to become the new standard in this segment. However, in the larger segment, the A220 is emerging as a strong contender, surpassing the E195 E2 with 912 orders, nearly three times the E2's total. The A220 is not only larger, offering higher capacity, but also has lower operating costs per seat, making it a more attractive option for airlines. Outside the U.S. market, the E2 family is seeing increasing interest from international airlines. Embraer has signed contracts with several airlines, including Royal Jordanian, Scoot, and SKS Airways, through agreements with leasing partner Azora, for a total of 27 E190 and E195 E2. In Europe, Binter has increased its fleet with six additional E195 E2, demonstrating strong acceptance of the aircraft. Thanks to these contracts, Embraer's total backlog reached 17.3 billion USD at the end of June 20th, 23, a positive sign for the long-term prospects of the E2. In particular, China is emerging as a potential market where Embraer hopes to make a major breakthrough. Negotiations between Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva and Chinese President Xi Jinping on a bilateral trade agreement are opening up new opportunities. According to multiple sources, the deal could include the sale of E-2 models to Chinese airlines, significantly expanding Embraer's presence in the world's second largest aviation market. If successful, this would be a major step forward for the E-2 to consolidate its position in the global market. In short, Embraer's E-2 line faces a number of challenges, from U.S. regulatory hurdles to technical issues to fierce competition. While sales have so far been disappointing, the E-2 may eventually find a home as airlines modernize their fleets. For now, however, Embraer's dream of replicating the E-1's success remains out of reach.